seated. I had thought um, that I was going to speak about one thing, but um, I changed my mind, so this may be a little bit rambling and uh, a little bit uh, on the um, disjointed side uh, this morning, shall we say. But, um, and, and if at any point you can't hear me, somebody needs to wave, because we've had a couple of problems for the last couple of weeks with, uh, if I look this way, people over there can't hear, and if I look this way, people over there can't hear. So I can't. <laughs> well, I guess I could. <laughs> Look like uh, I need a chiropractor or something. But, uh, but, um, I, the reason that, um, that my direction changed uh, was that a couple of days ago, and I'm sure you've seen it on the news by now, a couple of days ago uh, there was a shooting in Fredericton, New Brunswick, and um, the shooting happened about a block and a half from where I used to live, Nancy and I used to live, and a place where we used to walk in an apartment building or in front of an apartment building where we used to take our mail to mail when we'd go walking in the morning. And so it kind of shook me up, you know, just knowing that, and uh, when the, the news clips came on, we could see um, uh, occasional glimpses of the police with the, all the, the armor on in our former backyard. <laughs> You know, and it was, it, it kind of shook me up and it made me think about how fragile life is sometimes and how uh, things are unexpected. And um, we, we plan our lives, but in the middle of our lives come unexpected things. And then um, last night I got the message that the block, the other side of where we used to live in Fredericton, the police were there with heavy armor and uh, <laughs> thinking, what, you know, what is this? <laughs> and once again, you know, the, the whole business about the fragility of life and how uncertain it is. And we haven't lived there for five or six years now, but it still feels like, you know, you see your, your former house and this could have been when we were there. It could have been when we were walking. And I was listening to the one lady who lived across the street um, talk about how she was watching out the window and the guy shot the window and the bullet went through her window, through her wall, and into her son's headboard uh, on his bed. And thinking how, how fragile life is, how unpredictable, how it could be difficult. And, um, and, and then uh, thinking, and this was not pre-planned, but uh, that after the sermon we're going to sing a song that says, when it's all been said and done, there's just one thing that matters. And it keeps going through, there's just one thing that matters. And, it made me think again about how, um, what does really matter in life, you know? And that uh, those of you who, who know me know that I s have a sick sense of humor, but I do have a sense of humor, and I like to joke, and I like to goof around and play games and do these things. But when it comes to, to thinking about um, how God interacts with us, how God interacts with us when the things happen in our lives that we are not predicting. How do we respond and how do we know that God is still walking with us? That the Lord is still walking at our elbow? And how do we do that? And what's, what do we spend our time worrying about? Because I spend my time worrying about lots of different things. And most of the lots of different things that I worry about never happen. But sometimes they do. And so how do you figure out what's, what really matters? When it's all been said and done, what really matters? And I was thinking about that in terms of, um, of uh, our situation here at Gathering Table. And um, as we have... Uh, been speaking about different things over the last couple of weeks, talking about the values that were identified and how we want to try and build on the values. One of the things that came to my mind was that these are some of the things that matter. These are some of the things that matter for us as a community of God's people. And because they matter, we need to understand them and we need to know them and as much as possible, own them as a community. Now, it doesn't mean that everybody's going to agree with everything, because I don't even agree with me sometimes. And so 
it's not a matter of everybody agreeing with everybody, but it's a matter of what Paul, the Pauline author, <laughs> sorry, Dale, Pauline author wrote <laughs> in uh, Ephesians. <laughs> it's how we treat one another, how we interact with one another in the midst of these things, in the midst of when we don't agree. I know it's hard to believe, but we don't agree about everything. And how do we interact with each other and how do we treat each other? Because the Lord has spoken to us in many different ways. And when the Lord speaks to us in many different ways about the same thing, and it comes down to this, love one another as I have loved you, love the Lord your God, be kind to one another, these kind of things, it tells us something about our relationships together. And it's not just moralism. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not just saying, be nice, people. That's not the gospel. The gospel is be new people. Be renewed people. And so we open our hearts and we let our hearts be transformed. And as our hearts are transformed, our relationships get transformed. And it's not like, snap, bang, that's done. It's tang it takes time, and it's a process, and it's a growth. And when you think about it, we are just about, what, two months old? And we're still figuring out things. Like, this takes time. And I, I'm trying to say something, and I'm going to try to say it in the, the most gentle way that I can say it. I don't mean to be flippant and I don't mean to be rude. You may take offense if you wish, but that's not my intent. But I hear people say, you know, in this, this baby thing that we're doing here and the birthing of the baby and uh, all of that, I hear people say, well, this is not St. John's. This isn't the way it was at St. John's. And then I hear people say, well, this isn't the way it was at St. Luke's. And I think, well, there's probably a good reason for that. This is neither St. John's nor St. Luke's. And we've spoken about that right from the beginning, that what was happening here was a new thing. And obviously it has roots in things that went before. But the roots should nurture the coming together, not become two separate plants that keep going at each other. And I think that on the whole, as we've been meeting these times, I think that's happened. On the whole, we are moving toward the new thing that God is doing. And I think we're doing it well. Sometimes there's things that irk us. All of us. Not me, of course, because I don't get irked. I just, I'm so calm and you know that's not true. But there are, and I said at the very beginning in the very first um, talk that I did that there will be plenty of time to not like things. There will be plenty of occasions to be unhappy, whether it's about the name or it's about the shape or it's about the music or it's about whatever. There are plenty of times. What matters not so much is all of that as how do we react with, do you interact with each other in the midst of that? What is the Lord calling us to do in the midst of that? And I think Paul, or Pauline author, hit it spot on the head when he said, bear with one another, be kind to one another. Because what I hope, and, and I, this is my daily prayer for a gathering table, is that as we explore and as we try different things and as we move in different directions, that it stirs a spirit of curiosity. I wonder why we do this. I wonder how we could do this differently or I wonder if we should do this the same way. And I wonder and I wonder and I wonder. And when we're wondering, there's less room for battering. I uh, used to hunt up a lot by Vermilion Bay and uh, hunted partridge a lot. I still like to hunt partridge, but, uh, or, or grouse, they're not technically partridge, right? So uh, 
there's a, a road up there, particularly an old logging road that I really, really like to, to go down. It was just beautiful. And one day I was, I was walking down this road and it came around at one of the corners and there were two bull moose locked in, antlers locked in a, in a fight. And I just stood there and watched them for a while and thought, this is so much how the church is so often. There's a whole forest out there and these two moose are fighting on an abandoned logging road. There's a whole forest of God's love, of God's care, of missions and ministries for us. There's a whole forest of them out there. And locking horns doesn't get us anywhere. Disagreeing is fine, as long as we treat one another with respect. I've always said you don't have to agree with me, and I mean that. Because when it's all been said and done, what really matters? What really matters? Somebody uh, in a meeting, and I can't, honestly cannot remember who said this, but in a meeting recently uh, said, well, we usually uh, do Advent services differently. And I, I paused and I said, how do we know that? Because we have never done Advent together. We have never done Advent as gathering table. There are lots of things that are new that are, these are the first time we're doing these things. And there are lots of times when, when it's an occasion where we could rub up against each other and butt up against each other. Or it's an occasion when we can say, I wonder why, I wonder how, I wonder. Because then we don't fall into this nonsense of the religious leaders who came to Jesus and said, isn't this the son of Joseph, the carpenter? We know who he is. Who does he think he is? Butting heads and grumbling and doing all those things. And Jesus says, come on, guys. What's really important? What's really important? You eat this bread and you drink this wine. You, you, you eat my flesh. You drink my blood. You nurture yourself on me. And in the depth of that relationship of the people together with the Lord, because the Lord has opened the life of the Trinity for us and invited us to come in. And when you think about the creator of all is present with us now, in this place, the Lord who has given himself for us in his body and his blood is here present with us in this place. The very spirit of God is moving among us. Isn't that what really matters? Isn't that what the heart of it is? To be aware of God's presence in our midst. I just... Um, trying to be cool and use my phone. So somebody said you should really use your phone during a, a sermon. Uh, not really. <laughs> and I keep this phone in a little leather case, which my kids say, that's embarrassing. Don't. <laughs> anyway. Um, the Anglican liturgist, liturgist Richard Giles, wrote in a book something along these lines. And because this is probably the sticking point of all sticking points for our life together, he says, and I think he was quoting us, <laughs> because this is almost exactly what it says in our vision document with the principles and stuff. He says, a broad variety of musical styles from a variety of sources is foundational to good liturgy. It's also controversial with a higher irritation factor than any other liturgical component. <laughs> I think he was looking in. <laughs> At least I would if he hadn't written that a couple of years ago. <laughs> but it's true, isn't it? It is so true. And these are the opportunities that we have 
for something new. Not something new in that it's necessarily a new song or it's a new uh, hymn or a new prayer or a new way of sitting or a new way of taking communion. But the newness, the newness is in how we relate to one another because the Lord has called us into the presence of God, into the very life of God. And the newness isn't so much the things that we do. The newness has to come from the heart of who we are. And that's one of the things that I see on Sunday morning here. I see it in other places too, meetings. I see it in different places. I see people getting to know each other. And in getting to know each other, establishing relationship. Because establishing relationship is at the heart of what we're about. Relationship with God that flows into our relationships with each other. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Love each other. Yeah. And that is real newness. That's the heart of it. And when we welcome people into our midst, one of the, um, of the things that, that has come out lately, and I, I don't really know another way to say it yet, but we're trying to figure it out, is um, people are objecting to the word inclusion. Not here. People, nobody here. This is, this is a, a broad picture thing. Uh, people are objecting to the word inclusion, and I understand why. Because if I say I, I want us to be inclusive, it means that there's an us and a them. And that us are going to include the them. And as I've said multiple, multiple times over the, the last few years, there is no us and them. There is us. And how do we speak about inclusion in a way that doesn't imply that, that we're, the, we're, the, we're the good guys, you know, we're the right ones? I, I don't know how to do that, but that's what we mean. That's what we mean when we try to say we want to be inclusive, welcoming. But it's not us and them. It's our heart of falling in love with the Lord who has come into our midst and our heart of falling in love with you, each other. And I said at both the last vestry meetings, the last St. Luke's, the last St. John's, that one of the things that surprised me coming to Thunder Bay, becoming part of St. Luke's first and then St. John's after, was the way that I love you people. It's hard to know why sometimes, but that's one of the blessings and the curses of my position. But it isn't always automatic. It doesn't just happen. And even people who rub us the wrong way can still be loved and still be cared for. And in our midst, when it's all been said and done, what really matters? What really matters? I think it revolves around this whole business of God calling us into his heart. God calling us into the life of the Trinity. And us learning to dance. I'm looking at you guys because you guys are such beautiful dancers. And we have actually learned a couple of things from you. And we're not beautiful dancers like they are, but we stumble through. But learning to dance this dance of God's life. When it's all been said and done, who cares what kind of chair you sit on? When it's all been said and done, does God stand there and say, you didn't kneel for communion, or you stood, or you didn't do something else, or you did something else? God is going to ask any of those questions. When it's all been said and done, God's going to say, what was our relationship like? And actually, God says that before it's all been said and done, because God is saying that to us now. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.